The mic has been in frame for like six videos at least, and it's driving me insane. Oh my god, get out of my shot! What do we think the over-under is that I just fucked up the audio while I was doing that? <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to my channel where I cover nostalgic, obscure, otherwise strange content. If that interaction wasn't enough to tell you the chaos level that is my entire being, um, I just want everybody to know that I put chocolate chips in my coffee this morning because I can. I'm an adult, I can do those things. Today, as promised, I'm looking at another episode of Shelley Duvall's Fairy Tale Theater. Uh, we looked at the Three Little Pigs episode in the last video. If you haven't seen that yet and you want to, please do so. Uh, it's not at all important to understanding this video, but you know, it'll be a fun time, probably. <laughs> Since Beauty and the Beast is my favorite fairy tale to the point of it having its own playlist on this channel, I knew that I wanted to talk about this before talking about any other episodes. I'm excited, hopefully you're excited. Let's just jump into it. Hello, I'm Shelley Duvall. Oh my God, look at her riding a horse. Welcome to Fairy Tale Theater. That is such a boss move. Shelly is iconic. I feel like, I feel like my bangs are doing a disservice to how great her bangs look. It's, she's great. I love her. Tonight's story is taken from the classic French tale. She's wearing that yellow floral top. Beauty and the Beast. My favorite fairy tale. Oh yeah, this is the one where Susan Sarandon plays Beauty. Angelica Houston, no way! Sorry, if you've never watched an episode of Fairy Tale Theater with me, this is basically what it is every single time. So I assume that these are the two mean sisters playing outside. <laughs> Hello! See you. And I would also assume that this guy riding up is supposed to be like the Gaston type, for those of you who only know the, the Disney version, which is a very good version. I'm not trying to be like gatekeep, like, oh, if you only know the, the Disney one like a normie. Like, no, fuck that. But, you know, I think that's what this is. Is Beauty home? Why doesn't Shark call on us? We're twice as beautiful. I mean, your parents don't think so. If they named one of you Beauty, your parents have a favorite. You know how horrid I feel it is for you to fill your days with housework. Will you not reconsider my offer? So this guy is like, please, Beauty, marry me. And she's like, I know that my life kind of sucks right now, but no. <laughs> Do not say it. I have to. False hope is not fair. Which is stone cold, and I applaud her for that. If you become my wife, surely my family will see to it he is provided for. Jack, when I marry, it will be out of love, not out of need. Beauty knows her worth. She's like, I don't love you. Surely there's someone out there who will love you, but it's not me. Jack, have you heard? We will be a family of means again. <laughs> Were you not? A family of wealth and means before? Look at this house. Look at the grounds you're living on. Also, wouldn't it be funny if Beauty caved for the sake of like the financial state of her family and then literally as that happens, they run and they're like, dad, ships are coming in. What more can go wrong? Meanwhile, their dad is riding through a very uh, creepy, smoky forest. They're lost and they are not. It has a very nice aesthetic, but I'm worried about the health of those trees now. I it's a lot of smoke. Hello! This came out in 1984. I believe that makes it seven years older than the Disney version. So it doesn't have weight that was the first movie ever to get nominated for Best Picture of the Year hanging over its head. So I'm interested to see what it does because I think all of the other versions that we've covered are either related to the Disney version or came out after. Hello! Hey! What's up? Either there's some magic going on in this castle or the beast is quite an engineer. You know how in the uh, movie version of <laughs> Phantom of the Opera where they keep the imagery of the the candelabras coming up from the from the floor because that's what they did in the show but like it's not a live stage show doing a transition it's a movie so it's like it just comes off like the the phantom is just down there like tinkering in his time off Where the hell did that hand come I from? I want to thank you for your hospitality. You don't have any more I questions? Trust. Where did that hand come from? I drink to your health. <laughs> this feels like somebody, like, because usually there's magic making all these things happen. This feels like 
a really bad magician is just like kind of trying to do sleight of hand and it's working because the dad is just not paying attention. He fell asleep in the chair? That had to be uncomfortable. As he's leaving, he pulls the old, I'm gonna pick a flower for my daughter. Rookie mistake because the, the beast comes flying out from around the corner. He's like, hey, those are my flowers, bitch. You steal my rose. The one I love the most. The beast truly is nightmare fuel, isn't he? Like, I've talked at length about how usually I don't ever find the beast scary. I mean, there was that one that looked like Donkey Kong in that Good Times Home video one, but like, usually it's hard to see the beast as scary because part of it is that he's actually a good person underneath. But like, this one, the prosthetics and the, this is, this is kind of scary. This is a lot. My youngest daughter asked only for a white rose. Usually we see uh, Beauty ask for the rose, but uh, he's just filling us in. Uh, my lord, don't call me a lord. So, I mean, I guess we didn't have to see it. Pacing reasons, I like that. I like that we're getting to the point pretty quickly. You have stolen my rose, and you must die. Unless one of your daughters will come to my castle in your place. So it's important to note in the time that this story was written, he's the print and stealing was a capital offense. Sure, he could have just let it slide if he wasn't such a grouchy boy, but he's just being like a stickler for the law. Go and profit of your chance. He's got like Virgo energy going on, you know? Then you must swear you shall return within seven days. Swear! He's not actually a bad dude. Although, why did he say he would kill the dad or one of his daughters could take his place forever. And you must die! Unless one of your daughters will come to my castle in your place. Why Why wasn't it consistent? Like, was it the dad was older and so he was like, if I just let you stay here, it's not good enough of a punishment? That's harsh. And the horse will bring you back. Uh, go where I go. A magic horse? Sure! He's very shouty, this version of the beast. Also, he showed up on a horse. Where? What about his horse? You cannot go back. I have no choice, Beauty. So he goes home to his three daughters, and Beauty is like, I'll go, because she's a boss. Father, let me go in your place. You must never say that. The way he, like, hesitated and turned around for one split second, I, I thought he was gonna be like, I'd never let one of my daughters go. But Betty over there could definitely go. How do you find the monster? <laughs> but Beauty will not be deterred. She sees the white rose, and she flies back, well, she's, I mean, she flies like she's going really fast, not like it's a flying horse, but like, she zooms back on the horse, takes her right back to the castle. I like this choice too, because in most of the other versions we've covered, Beauty's dad is fully aware and somewhat consenting to what she's doing, even if he's reluctant. I like that she just straight up went behind his back because it makes uh, her dad seem more likable. No. Like in the Disney version, he literally had to get dragged away. In some versions, he's just like, damn, thanks for being a real homie, daughter. Beauty! <laughs> Beauty! <laughs> I'm sorry, that was funny. Beauty and the monster. Damn, the sisters are cold. I know that's like their whole thing, but they're just like, <laughs> maybe she'll get eaten. They did not even try to make that look like it wasn't a soundstage. And honestly, it's a choice and I love it. All of these episodes have a real like theater, well, fairy tale theater, but you know, it has a very like live stage show feeling to them. And I appreciate that. Where are you going? Oh God. I, I, I would have passed out too. I've seen him before and that jump scared me. He's like, damn, she died? He's not at all uh, concerned enough. He just yoinked her! That was hilarious! It's also funny getting to see Susan Sarandon play a uh, soon-to-be princess because you remember when she was the evil stepmother in Enchanted? We're getting closer to doing the Enchanted video and I am excited. Did he- wait, did he change her clothes? Let's get an instant playback on that. There's a rose on the door! Her clothes just magically changed to a nightgown as he carried her through the door. Kinda neat. Why are they playing such ominous music? Like, I get it. 
this could be potentially very creepy, but like, it's also sweet. Like, he didn't put her in the dungeon. He's being a very gentlemanly beast. Why do you have to make it like a horror movie? I mean, I know he looks like that, but don't play him like that. See, he seems more scared of her than she is of him. You know, they say that about spiders. Do not look into my eyes like that. You will see me only in the evening. Why do I feel like that soundbite has such memeable potential? Beauty! Yeah, she's gone, dude. Sorry. That powder blue is a beautiful color on her. It brings out her hair and her eyes. You must not be afraid. Then don't sneak up behind her like that. I'm not. She's really trying to act tough, but I think she's pretty afraid. Would you mind if I watch you while you die? Weird, but okay. Also, why does it look like he's trying to do like ear to ear ASMR in like real time? <laughs> but I see that you have done everything possible to help me forget the way you look. You've done everything possible to help me forget the way you look. Damn. <laughs> Even so, I look so ugly. I have a soul. Aww. He's actually just kind of a big teddy bear. I kind of feel bad for saying that he was ugly. He looks better than the Ewoks in the Ewok movies. Will you be my wife? Oh no, no beast, no. It was a very emphatic no, but it was very forward of him to ask that quickly. Times really were different back then. I see. I love the versions where the beast just continually keeps asking her to marry him because as he she says no, he's just like, okay, and then he just like mopes off feeling sorry for himself. Damn, if you can hear that thunder, it's really pouring outside. It is a dark and stormy night. <laughs> it helps the ambiance, you know? Marguerite, stop it! You're ruining our potatoes! I'm not. I'm Meanwhile, the whole household is falling apart without beauty because nobody else did any fucking chores. What's that, a crow that I heard outside? Just like screaming? Caw -caw! Oh, this is scary. What's happening? What the hell was that? It's giving off like the visit vibes. So he screams at the magic mirror to look at her, and then she's like right there. It's like when you text somebody that you live with thinking that they're out of the house, and they're like in the next room, and they're like, why the fuck did you just come and talk to me? Why are you in my bedchamber? Oh, this is her room. He went into her room where the magic mirror already lives. And then she's like, what the hell, dude? To bring you a gift. He's like, I brought you a present. <laughs> you know, this beast, he's trying hard, but he's trying a little too hard, you know? She's just like, huh, that was weird. The next day, she sees the beast drinking out of the lake. What's happening? He's growling. I don't like that he's growling. <laughs> she just walks back inside. She's like, I don't even, I don't even want to know. Good evening. You are late. Thank you, beauty, for noticing. <laughs> Thank you for noticing. I'm going to say that every time I show up to a stream late, <laughs> when everybody's like, late, Avery's late again, I'll just be like, thank you for noticing. I want to talk to you. I cannot live without my father. Oh, she finally cracked. It is I who must kneel to you. Oh, chivalry isn't dead. Chivalry's just a little furry. <laughs> Will you be my wife? What torturing me? So she's like, I want to go home and see my dad. And he's like, if I let you go and come back, will you marry me? She's like, really, dude? I will die of grief and loneliness. You know, pressure or anything, he'll just die. He'll just die if you don't come back. You pity me. I mean, you just guilt tripped her, so I don't know what you expected. I almost look forward to seven o'clock. You are so kind, beauty. They're getting to know each other. They're in the talking phase. Your voice seems much softer. No, it can't be. I'll just ignore. Are not the days very long? But then she's never looked at me that way before. Oh god, does he kill deer? That's what he does, right? But he doesn't want to say that. The look up to the deer, he was just like... 
The next night she wakes up to agonizing screams again. Oh jeez! Oh my god! Your body is stained with blood. Forgive me. He's a werewolf. Forgive me. <sighs> For being a beast. He ate the deer, didn't he? Close your curtain! Close your curtain! That has the exact same energy of Elf, where she's like, get out! Don't look at me! Get out! And then he runs into the lockers. So then she sees her dad in the magic mirror. Are you ill? Beauty. I think my favorite thing about this version of the beast is when he walks around, it's almost like he has no idea what to do with his hands. He's just so nervous. I can't see you suffer. That's my favorite part of Beauty and the Beast when he's all like awkward around me. beauty. It's cute. But you must return. You will let me see my father? So he's like, fine, you can go, whatever. Take this ring. Gives her a magic ring that'll teleport her. Remember. You promise. This one's a lot more earnest than the other two we've seen so far. I, I don't dislike it. I kind of figured they would just make fun of Beauty and the Beast because it's kind of an easy thing to make fun of. But like, I like that it's got this like period drama tone. Beauty. So she comes home. Sisters, good morning. Marguerite. And her sisters I'm aren't very happy to see her. Are you not dead? Well, no, I am quite alive. You would think they'd like appreciate her now that they've been struggling without her. Yes, and being driven mad by your father. Did you just call him your father to her? Or isn't he also your father? That was a lot of uses of the word your, but you know what I mean, right? Look at that mirror shot. That was nice. I'm a nerd for stuff like that. She's not wearing that ring anymore. Well, where is it then? Oh yeah, the sisters are always jealous of Beauty when she has sisters. They're like, man, I wish I was the one getting held against my will. Damn, Beauty. Beauty, you are alive. My, how stunning you are. This dude just literally rolls up after he hasn't seen her in presumably months and just like, ah, you're not dead yet. Can I resume hitting on you now? Would you enjoy a stroll? Why, yes. His hair is so poofy. Perms were in in 1984. Beast really does give off cowardly lion energy in this one, doesn't he? <laughs> Aww. Okay, smelling her sheets, that's kind of weird, but the way that he picked up the blanket, it was like he was like, blanky, and that was funny to me. I only have seven days to visit you, and then I must return. Return? No, no, no you're, you're never going back to that place. Why didn't you tell him this like right it. away? I must. If, if I do not, he will die. She's like, Dad, he's cool now. Well, that would be good. And the dad's like, fuck him. Let him die. And she's like, no. I cannot hurt him. He has only been kind and giving. Yeah, he's kind of a sad emo boy. In his eyes. He's so sad. Kind of like Batman. Oh god, did I just inspire somebody to write a Batman Beauty and the Beast AU fanfic? It probably already exists. I'm sure it exists. The echo and the whisper. Oh, so are all mirrors magic in this version? I'm confused. There's a lot of mirror clairvoyance going on. Mirror clairvoyance would be a great name for a band. Remember. Promise, 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 promise. See, now you've got me doing ASMR beast. Oh, did they take her ring? She's saying we stole her stupid ring. It doesn't matter who took it. I, I just want it returned, please. I think Susan Sarandon's doing a pretty good job of portraying the best part about beauty as a character, which is that she's kind, but she's still strong. You know, those two things are not mutually exclusive like people think they are. I'm going to change. When I come back, I want the ring in the box. Like, sh like beauty always embodies to me as a character the phrase, do no harm, but take no shit. And I love that for her. I get rid of the damn thing. <gasps> oh, so the dad took it. Interesting. Get it out of the house. So he sends the two daughters and Gaston, who's there for some reason. I guess he just lets himself in. Take the accursed piece to the city and sell it to some fool. To the city to sell the ring? Pretty shady, but his kid did get technically kidnapped. He's dying. 
the beast is done and I want to be with him. She's like, but dad, I love him. He's my beastie boyfriend. Can you not understand? No, I do not understand. This is something I think about in every version. Holidays are gonna be awkward for that extended family get together, right? Cause like, you wanna talk about like your dad hates your boyfriend? Imagine if your boyfriend kidnapped your dad one time. Take my horse. I'm Jacques. I gave him the ring to sell at the marketplace. <laughs> the wannabe Gaston is named Jacques? <laughs> That's funny. He definitely gives off Jacques energy. The sunset reflected off the water should be most charming. He's not as horrible like Gaston was. Oh my god, did she transport without her clothes and she's gonna show up naked? Beauty. But no, he's not like a total bastard like Gaston. He didn't try to kill anybody, which is a low bar. But you know, he's there. Oh no, Beauty, the blasted piece is cursed, you know? He keeps asking her to marry him and she doesn't want to, but like the beast did the same thing, so like, uh huh. Beast! So she gets back to the castle, not naked, just in a different dress. Oh, beast. Look at me. She finds him passed out on the grounds. Forgive me. I'm the monster, not you. You didn't do anything, Beauty. You were trying to get back. You must have courage. You must fight. If I were a man, I could do as you say. Come on, Beast. You're better than that. That was my favorite transition out of all the Beast to Prince transitions I've ever seen. Because every single time that we're watching a version where there isn't a Gaston character to kill the Beast, or try to, the Beast is just like, I'm too sad. I'm gonna die. I love you. And then Beauty's like, but you want to get married? And the Beast is like, I am less sad and will not die anymore. <laughs> But that was so jarring. I love that. He just like jumped to his feet. My parents would not believe in fairy tales. So the fairies punished them. Hang on. His parents didn't believe in fairy tales. So the fairies punished them by cursing him? That's the most fucked up part of this. Could only be saved by the love of a woman. Are such miracles possible? That's even worse than the than all the other versions of him being cursed. Love can make a man become a beast. And love can also make an ugly man beautiful. Where are his parents? Are they suffering too? Did they just leave him to suffer by himself? Do you regret that I have changed? Oh no, my lord, it is not that. I, I miss the beast. See, in all the other versions, it's clear that she loves him for him, so she doesn't care that he's a beast. In this one, she's really sad that he's not a beast anymore. You love the beast. Maybe this is how she finds out she's a furry. That's valid. She's just voicing the opinion that all the monster fuckers on Tumblr had with the original version. Well, the Disney version, it's not the original. You remember how everybody was like, oh man, he was way hotter when he had horns. Now he's just some dude. <laughs> Which, screw that. Did you see his hair? He had glorious ginger hair. Belle, it's me. That prince was a snack. And when he was a beast, he was the whole damn meal. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. You are a strange one, baby. He is very soft-spoken. The beast really should start an ASMR channel, though. Will you marry me, beauty? You share my kingdom with me? Where is your kingdom? This isn't his kingdom? This is just like his backup pad, his summer home, his summer castle. They fly there through the clouds. Are you afraid? I love to be afraid with you. I'd love to be afraid with you. Is that what she said? That's, I think, cute. A little confusing. But that's the very end. That was the most like seriously toned one that we've seen so far and it worked. It really did. Cause like the other ones are hilarious and they've, they've just been so fun. But this one was just so like committed to telling the Beauty and the Beast story, which I appreciate as a lover of Beauty and the Beast, as somebody who's systematically going through trying to just cover every version of Beauty and the Beast or adaptation of Beauty and the Beast that I can find. I love that. Also though, it's still closer to the original fairy tale than it is to what Disney ended up doing, they did make some changes that really made the characters more sympathetic a lot of the times. Like, her dad was a lot more sympathetic than he comes across in other versions. Not Maurice, though. Maurice is a cutie. <laughs> and they still gave her, like, a conventionally attractive dude to turn down without him being a huge pain in the ass, so, you know. 
I think all that's cool. I think the reason Shelley Duvall's Fairy Tale Theater is such a beloved show is just that you can tell that the people who made it just had a lot of love for what they were doing. It's the same thing with Jim Henson stuff, right? When people are having fun and truly believe in what they're working on and they're working with creative people that respect them enough to be creative and do their job, that really shines through. You can feel it in the finished product. And so yeah, I just really appreciate this. I know you guys have requested pretty much all of the other episodes and we're getting to them for sure. For those of you who want to see other things, we're obviously going to cover some different stuff and then circle back around, but it will be sooner than later that I cover more of them because I really think this show deserves to be talked about more than it is. I know a lot of people remember it, but like you can't talk about it too much, you know? It was just like a very calm, peaceful thing. I feel, I feel like I've just been meditating. I think it was the beast ASMR. It really worked. But yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing. Everything you do to support this channel means the world to me. Um, if you're new here and you're a fan of nonsense, maybe consider sticking around because I post nonsense all the time. And remember, my name is Avery. I'm a YouTuber if you say so because thanks to you guys, this is technically a YouTube channel. There's something sweet and almost kind, but he was mean and he was coarse and unrefined. It's in my head now. I thought if I sang it, it would get out of my head. And now he's dear and so unsure. I wonder why I didn't see it there before.